What's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. So tonight I am at one of the locations that I filmed at for my TV show Ghost Loop. Cannot believe I'm back here. We were actually passing through Illinois and I said, why don't I go back to the Dead and Breakfast? You might recognize this place from my TV show. Hopefully you do, but if you don't. Episode number five. Episode number five. But if you don't. That was that. Sound like someone's trying to get in the door. Did you hear that? This place is super spooky. Beautiful, but super spooky. I'm gonna do my best to tell you guys everything that happened here. And honestly, things are already starting to happen, so it's gonna be an interesting night. But we are in Prairie de Roucher. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Illinois, um, right by St. Louis, actually. And this was one of my favorite locations to film at for my TV show. The house is built in the early 1900s by the Connors, William and Constance, and they actually built this big, beautiful home directly on Main Street to bring more business to their, just to bring them more business. This is I know, this here. is all back here, guys. So like, there's actually, <laughs> there's something that happened as soon as we got here which I will show you in just a second, but this doll was was here when I did the show. And um, Constance, who owns the house now, which ironically, her name is also Constance. Huge long story about how she ended up with this house. Really weird coincidence, but honestly, I don't really think it's a coincidence. Um, I call her Connie, but her name is Constance. And Constance actually also named her daughter Constance. And then Connie, who is also Constance, bought this property. Well, it kind of like fell into her lap, sort of. Just a weird thing. There's some weird stuff that has gone on here. And in the TV show, we really did our best to try to unveil what had actually happened here. So we're going to see what we can find tonight. Um, I don't want to go on for too long because this house is just amazing. And I want to be able to, um, yeah, I just want to be able to, you know, take you guys along. And I want to show you guys everything. There's just so much and I can talk about this house forever. And I just really hope that you guys enjoy it. So make sure you are hitting that thumbs up button if you are throughout the video, but you should be hitting that thumbs up button and ready. Please. Follow me on Instagram at it's Chris Star, Twitter at, wait, I don't know, it's Chris Star too. Anyway guys, if you don't know, I'm here with James the Fam. We are only a third of the way through the country on our haunted road trip and I am ready to string them drop them off somewhere and leave them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we are having a good time, guys, but we have so much planned for you and tonight is going to be pretty crazy. So stick around and let's just get right on into tonight's spooky video. So what I wanted to show you guys real quick before I give you a little tour of this beautiful home, this mannequin doll here. I'm not really too sure what's going on with her, but when I was here filming for the TV show, uh, she really did freak some of us out. Um, Connie was actually gifted this mirror and this brush uh, just the other night. And as soon as we got here, the brush was actually on the floor. And okay, so you guys can't, so you guys can't tell, but this, this brush right here is really heavy. Like, do you see that? So the fact, it's just weird because the brush was like this and it was flipped over on the floor. So, I don't yeah, know. I never freaked out about that. Wait. What did you do? You don't like your new brush? She don't like her new brush. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> I don't think she likes it. But yeah, I'm not sure. Um, she's uh, a little little freaky there. Gorgeous, beautiful, but you know. If you don't like your brush, just put it back on the floor and let us know. <laughs> All right guys, That'd I'm gonna good. give you a quick tour of the house. <clears throat> well, down here anyway. The house is huge. This is just one part of the living quarters. Um, and it does go back. There's another dining room area or living quarters. I don't know what to call it. Like a living room, dining room. What do they call it back in the day? They, like they had like fancy names for this stuff, you know? Living quarters. Living quarters. Here I am, oversized t-shirt. Got the, got the vans, you know how we do. Nothing fancy. Um, but yeah, let's take a peek back here. Jasper. <laughs> Not funny. But Connie has done such a good job at taking care of this place. She does renovate old properties and I feel like her getting this property just makes so much sense. Old school bathroom. Look at this. Look how cool this is. I'm just gonna flush the toilet. Woo! <laughs> James. 
What are you doing? <laughs> what are you Look, there I am. <laughs> What? Help. Like, please help. Oh my god. Okay, in all the seriousness, James needs to sleep outside tonight. <laughs> I thought it was pretty accurate. This is gonna get a little crazy, I think, because James and I are separating and I'm gonna go up to the attic where some of the crazier stuff happened while I was here. Okay, so we are... Oof. Guys, this place is crazy. <sighs> so everything is still here. Oh my gosh. Guys, everything is still here from when I filmed here. The beds that they shackled us to, right there. So I do just wanna say, that upon coming up here when I first have entered this, like the first time I ever came into this house, this attic was really heavy. We learned about the spirit of Anna, who we believe tragically died in this home. It was a boarding home where they kept undesirables people that maybe had like a mental illness or unwed mothers, which we believe Anna was an unwed mother and she was kept here like her family was super embarrassed. And yeah, I mean, obviously that would never happen nowadays. I don't know why that would ever even happen, <laughs> um, but it did. And her go, the, so she's actually seen in the window of the bedroom that I'm sleeping in. Yeah, I'm gonna set my camera up and set the REM pod up and let's see if we can communicate with anyone. I feel like I hear someone crying. It's so weird. Okay. Let me reset the REM pod. <clears throat> See, I'm gonna sit on the floor. It's um, so weird being back here. Like, sir, my friend and I separated. He's in the basement and I'm in the attic. My REM pod is going off. Someone is here with me. Can you make that go off for me? So I was actually just filming a reel for my Instagram and look at my camera getting super blurry right now. And I was recording on it. So we discovered the spirit of Anna. Um, I truly believe that she passed away here in the home. The details are a little brutal. I'm not sure if she actually did commit suicide or if somebody Wow. Anna, if that's you, can you back away from that? I can cry. Guys, being back here is like almost emotional for me because I felt such a deep connection to her. At the end of the episode though, we, we really tried so hard to help her find the light to help her cross over and Sean and I 
actually right behind me we we did um we, we did an entire session and I, I really thought that we helped her find peace so it would really make me sad if she's still here and entrapped and, and hasn't been able to move on let me get out the spirit box here I'm going to use the spirit box app that I use in every video and I'm going to Okay, I want to see who I'm communicating with. Anna. What? Anna, are you here? Anna, do you remember me? I heard look at me or don't look at me. Do you still need help? Yeah. Oh my god. Anna, what happened to you here? I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm having a really hard time breathing right now. And this happened to me last time I was up here. <sighs> Anna, did somebody hurt you up here? I'm hearing things all around me. Who else is here with us? I feel like someone's touching my shoulder. Are you touching me? I don't want to be touched. I, I want to help you, but I don't want to be touched. So I just want you to know um, that I'm here for you, but I, this is my energy and this is my space. Thank you, Anna. If that's you communicating with me, can you back away? Wow, that's coming in strong. Holy crap. Okay, I think, I think we have our answer. Let me know what you guys think. And if you saw Ghost Loop, if you saw that episode, and if you haven't, you should probably go watch it because it was heavy. There's a lot. I'm almost wondering if I should leave my REM pod to see if it goes off like while I'm downstairs. Ooh, I saw like the weirdest flash of light. James? Oh, are you done in the basement? Yeah, I'm done in the basement. Oh, shit. This thing is going off like crazy every time I say Anna. What, the REM pod? The REM pod. I heard stuff. I felt like I was being touched and like the same heavy breathing. Oh, I can't breathe. Like I'm out of breath. I like couldn't even stay up there. I was getting so hot. Like I'm sweating. No way. Oh. I wonder if like when you go in the basement, if anything... Because I didn't get much in the basement at all. I kind of want... Do you want to get any of this? Like, I feel like you should get some of this REM pod in your footage. You feel it? So, yeah. I had to go downstairs. I was sweating and I could not breathe right. And I'm so tired. Like, so unbelievably tired. Something just drained me so bad. And I feel like the presence up here is not necessarily malevolent. I don't feel like it's a 
evil entity or an evil spirit, but I'm like wheezing too. Me too. What I do feel like is whatever happened up here was so terrible and so tragic that it left this like crazy, crazy heaviness. I definitely feel that. Like I'm so tired. I had to walk downstairs and take a break, but James is here with me. Um, we're gonna do the sound up. We're gonna do some sound deprivation where I put some headphones on and um, we run a spirit box and see, you know, what I pick up on. The S S. What was it called? The Estes Estes. It's called the Estes method, and basically my senses are deprived. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my senses are blocked and I have to, I, I just say <clears throat> whatever is coming to me, like whatever I think I hear through the spirit box. So I think this will be interesting. Um, I also <laughs> really wanted to show you guys this part, which I don't know if I even got to mention before because things started going crazy as soon as I got up here. These beds right here were placed by our art department. Um, we did trigger environments where we recreated the environment from the time when this the person passed away. The idea behind the bed was that Anna was trapped up here and we were actually shackled to these beds and I'm so claustrophobic, like so bad. And I was freaking out. The beds are still here, it's crazy. It's almost nostalgic to be here, but also really sad because I feel like this heaviness truly might have not gone i'm not sure it's just weird because we spent so much time trying to cross her over and if it's not anna then who is it you know which bed did you sleep in or um which bed were you the middle to? one i was shackled in so they literally strapped you guys to the bed huh yeah and we did spirit box sessions and we put emf meters along the edge of the bed and they were going off. So mine, uh, I know, went off a couple times. So I think, so we're gonna do a sound deprivation, which I haven't done in a very long time. Where do you think would be a good place for you to? I think right here, because this, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of portal. Something is really going on here. here. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna ask specific questions and then we'll see if what I'm saying makes any sense. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna see if I can pick up on anything that James is asking. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely ask about Anna. Here, I'm gonna start it now. Oh wait, do you wanna have your rim pod what? on or no? What? Do you wanna have your rim pod on or no? I hear a really loud beeping in my ear right now. You can put the rim pod on. Get him out, the woman. Chris. Hurt, bad. He. Did Chris Who's he? Yes. There's more. There's more. William. Yeah. Who's here with us? The hell was that? What was what? I'm like tripping right now. What? It sounded like, so this was like quiet and then it sounded like somebody like whispered right in front of my face. <laughs> in front of your face? You weren't whispering, right? Obviously I did whisper. You were, you're like way over there. James is like pretty far. Was I this whispered going off? into my camera. Was this going off? Yeah, it went off. Okay, that's- See, that's, that's what's crazy. Yeah, I I did whisper 
when you did that, what's crazy is you didn't hear that thing going off right behind you, but you heard me whisper over here. That doesn't make any sense. No, it was like right in like front you of my couldn't face, have heard actually. Me, you couldn't have heard me whisper. Yeah, this was quiet for a minute. Dude, yeah, ask a couple really more questions. Weird. Let's see. Let's see. Let's ask a couple more questions. him killed me Not safe. He's here. He's here. Jump. They need help. There is like a vibration underneath me right now. Really? I'm like tripping out. I feel like because I'm like in a literal trance. You know what's crazy? So when we were starting back up before, yeah. the box went off immediately. The ring pod thing. Did anything I say, like, Makes sense. Uh, yeah, not a lot. Like, not much was answered on my side, but like, for example, um, just a little bit ago, you kept saying he's here, he's here, he's here. Mhm. Mm the freaking box started going off when you were saying that. Yeah, it was like pretty strong. I can't even hear it. This thing is so loud in my ear. And also, we have the reverb on, so it's hardly ever quiet when. Yeah, it's just hardly ever quiet because it's like constant reverb. There was like small pockets of nothing, yeah. but well, there's just a freaking vibration underneath my booty. <laughs> oh. Ah! Anna, if that's you, can you back away? Can you can you come more towards me if that's you? Like, did we? Not cross, did she not cross over? I don't know what to think, guys. Maybe we crossed another spirit over. Connie was convinced that there are multiple spirits here, but she did say that after we left, there was this unquestionable, like, the, after we left, there was a heaviness that was lifted, and she said it was so refreshing, and it felt so good but the energy was kind of dormant for a little bit too after. I haven't been here in three years, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really getting like out names, but what do you want to do now? You're know, getting like, like a lot of mixed reaction stuff, but I just, I don't know. I don't really know what to think. Did we not cross her over? Did we cross her over? Are I we- feel like you did cross her over. Like, I haven't seen... But it's weird because I, when I was up here mm -hmm. talking about her, this thing was going crazy. Mm. Could it be somebody that hurt her? Like, is that person still here? The person that abused her? The person that possibly killed her? Do you think it could be them? Mm. If it is, can you make that go off? Now it's just like eerily silent. If it's Anna, can you touch it right now? 
If it's the lady that was trapped in this house, can you make that device go off? You heard that? Someone is walking right behind me <laughs> or right in front of me. And now this device is, now the REM pod is just completely silent. So I am so drained. I am gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get some sleep. I am so drained. I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the morning, let you know if anything happens while I'm sleeping. Something definitely drained my energy up in that attic again. Happened when I was here filming for my TV show and it happened again. As you can tell, I'm like completely winded. So I will see you guys in the morning. Okay, so guys. What what an eventful day already. We are actually doing a meetup here from five to seven. A bunch of you guys are coming, so I'm really excited for that. But I got a couple hours of sleep. It was, it was a weird night. So the rooms are all pretty close to each other. And for some reason, James decided to charge his phone in one of the bathrooms, but his phone volume was on really high. And multiple times his phone GPS kept going off, so it kept waking me up. And I was like yelling to James in the other room to turn his phone off, but you guys already know that was not gonna happen. So it kept interrupting me, and I actually sleep with earplugs always just out of habit, including haunted places, just because like, if something's trying to interrupt my sleep, I don't wanna hear it, especially when I have to wake up the next morning and you know film and whatever, but um, it was a really weird night. I'm honestly pretty shocked to see that there's still so much activity here and I don't know who I was truly communicating with but whenever I mentioned Anna the REM pod went off and whenever I talked about suicide and you know something happening in the attic the REM pod was going off as well but I'm really curious to hear back those responses on the spirit box and with that sensory deprivation session that we did so I will be filming a whole separate video about this town because this town is 300 years old. It's one of the oldest parts of the country. Prairie du Rocher is so beautiful and there's a really sad story behind it as well. This entire town may be underwater very soon and completely destroyed if the levees give out. They are no longer maintaining the dam and it's a huge problem. So if the dam does give out, then this house and everything you see here, like where I'm sitting right now, won't be here ever again like it, it will be completely destroyed and completely gone so right now james and i are going to head around the town there's a couple bars and some people that i think remember my tv show so i'm curious to see if they remember me but i want to talk to them about the history and their thoughts on what's happening here and this is not the only haunted property here we're actually filming a whole other video tonight at the creole house and that house is even older than this house Lots of filming to do, so I'm not sure if I will um, catch up with you guys later in this video. But if I don't, stay tuned for my other videos to come because I will be filming more videos here in pra Prairie du Rocher. I can't ever say it, in Prairie du Rocher. But you do just get a very unsettling vibe sometimes in this house, especially upstairs in that attic. I think there's a portal. My equilibrium is always thrown off and that attic drained me so bad like sucked the life out of me and you can even see that in my tv show it didn't just happen to me it happened to some of the guys as well as well as connie and she feels the same exact way but i will say connie said there was a noticeable difference when my team from ghost sleep and i left after filming um she did say there was this notable this she did say there was this noticeable feeling of lightness and it did feel better but over time the activity did start to come back um, we believe we crossed over at least one of the spirits, but there definitely are a lot more here just because of the Connors that lived here. Turns out they had a couple kids that actually died in this house as well. Then it was a boarding house. And then of course, Anna, the lady who was trapped here, um, still a lot of ambiguity around the way that she passed away, so. Hey guys, so we are still here in Illinois at the beautiful Connor House Bed and Breakfast. I wanted to tell you guys what happened last night because I think that was the most activity that I've ever felt or experienced here in the Connor Bed and Breakfast. So we got back from the Creole house 
pretty late. Um, had a really weird situation happen. Uh, the lady, the president of the historical society, her name's Lori. She called me around one o'clock in the morning, hysterical, like hysterical. I thought something really bad happened and like, mind you, this is pretty, like if you're spiritual, you, you'll understand like kind of where we're coming from with this. But she has been seeing a lot of owls, specifically dead owls. And the last owl that collapsed and passed like and died in front of her, um, her daughter's father passed away like the next day. So last night on her way home, after we got done talking about this owl situation, she called me and said that an owl flew directly like into her car, like straight, like a straight shot, like looked her in the eyes. Um, this owl, however, did fly away, but she was so shook because this keeps happening to her and I don't blame her. So I've actually had three birds hit my windshield in the past two weeks. Um, two of them have died. So I'm trying to decipher that message from the universe, from the spirit realm. And it's been really hard because, you know, you look things up and you do your research and it's the things that are said about it aren't necessarily like the greatest. Like birds in general are super spiritual beings. So when it comes to owls who are known um, in ancient history as being messengers of the spirit realm, when this keeps happening, you you have to question it right so luckily lori was able to calm down and kind of collect herself and her thoughts and whatnot and i'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that i can help her you know because it's really unsettling makes me um like really sad for her because you know i don't want anything to happen and it, you know it very well could be nothing but it very well could be um a sign or a message from from her guides from her angels so now the other thing that I wanted to talk about really quick, because we actually have to head out, um, we're heading through Missouri today and we're going to be going to Colorado. So I think we have about 14 hours left of our drive, well my drive because you already know I'm the one doing all the driving, but last night I was sitting in the bathroom. The bathroom is like pretty big and it has a couch. James was already like in his room sleeping um, and this is right after the call with Lori. It felt like an earthquake. <laughs> It felt like the couch was vibrating. It was like shaking, like visibly shaking. And the lamp next to me was visibly shaking. I have a clip of it here. Um, and I sat there for like at least a good five minutes and was thinking, wow, this, you know, what could this be? Um, there's a train that rolls through town, but the train was not running through town. So I didn't really understand. Like, and I hadn't really felt that vibration yet. We've been here for two days. So, that vibrate the the vibration the shaking stops but now here's where it gets really weird i heard a man moaning so freaking loud that i was gonna go and wake james up to see if he was okay and i walked past his room and he was dead asleep like he was out and there is no way he'd be making those sounds it didn't even sound like him to be honest with you that's why i was more concerned because i'm like if he's making those sounds like sound like that this is a little unusual like that does not sound like him so um and as that was happening i heard uh what sounded like a door downstairs and the doorknob rattling um but then i heard footsteps above me I'm not gonna lie i thought maybe somebody had broken in for a minute because it would it sounded just like a person uh but this house obviously is very active but it was kind of dormant for a while so it's interesting that like i come here and everything is kind of picking up i told connie what happened this morning and she was saying that only recently has she, has she been hearing a man moaning and like the footsteps and everything that like i experienced last night so wanted to share that with you guys i really hope that you enjoyed this uh little adventure here through prairie du rocher um but i'm just like so excited to be here i'm pretty sad to be leaving if you guys are passing through you absolutely have to check out this amazing property this house is stunning connie does such an amazing job at taking care of her guests and this property um honestly i don't i don't know if i've ever seen like a more beautiful home in my opinion and i think a lot of that ties into the history um just the way that it was kept and of course the spooky side of things you guys know already love all this this is if I could live here, I would. Connie's like, when are you buying it? I'm like, give me 10 years. But 
I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Seriously, make sure that you guys are smashing that thumbs up button. And I will leave some links down below for the Connor house. You can check out um, the page where Connie posts all of her events and different things about the house. And you guys can even book a room here yourself. So if you're in the area, definitely got to check this place out. Um, and huge shout out to Pam and Blade who came through yesterday and met up with James and myself, um, showed them around the house. It was really fun. Um, super sweet people. You know, we definitely plan on doing more meetups and this was just a little far off the beaten path. So, you know, we weren't expecting too many people to come out, but still super grateful for the few people that did. So with that being said, guys, I will catch you in my next video and yeah, we have a lot of filming to do. So I hope that you are excited. I will catch you guys super soon. Peace out, Starlings. Actually, real quick, guys, before I end this video, I just wanted to say they got the birds out. Um, I know a lot of you guys were concerned in my live stream. So was I. Um, so I'm really glad that the birds are out. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot of birds up here. They were living up here. They like the attic. I like the attic too. I'd live up here if I could. Okay, that's all.